What's up guys, YST here and welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video. And today we are live on the test server to showcase the new powerhouse couple from the Knights Revenant faction. With one half being the new fusion that should be kicking off tomorrow. And the second half being a void legendary which I can only dream of having because as standalone champions, they are pretty good which we will break down once we get into the kits. But once you start synergizing them together, that's where it all comes to life and the value of these champions just skyrocket, which we will see in the Classic Arena later on. So we're just going through stage 88 of the, the Doom Tower here. I've been trying to test out her passive because she's supposed to take those crowd controlling debuffs to herself to kind of nullify those effects on our highest crit damage target, right? So I've just been trying to test it with the torments and stuff to see if I could see it come to life here. But it's just very hard to see, if I'm being completely honest. Like, as you've seen there, it said target changed, and then it said a double resisted there. So I'm starting to think, like, if you build her in high resistance, does that mean that you can resist those transfer effects, therefore becoming very valuable, right? But I'm going to have to have a bit more playtesting with that, but to me, that's basically how it seems. So let's just um, head out of here quickly. So 1.6 million damage and we cut the run of early, pretty impressive coming out from Narciss here. We might actually do like um, a separate part taking him out of the teams in the arena, just to see how the fusion stands alone by herself. Alright, um, let's head into it. And also guys, I hope you're all having an amazing day. And do you know what? I'm actually pretty late on a deadline for a giveaway. So what I'm going to do is, uh, throughout this video and you see the showcase... Let me know in the comment section below your first impressions on the fusion champion in the White Queen and Korra. And then in those comments include your UM codes and then I'll be drawing 5 lucky winners for 540 gems. And you know, pretty straightforward, we'll be picking those before the 10th of this month and good luck to everybody participating. So on the Necrobolt, she attacks one enemy with a 50% chance once booked of decreasing the cooldown of a random ally skill by 2 turns except this champion. So being able to cycle around those A1s and then bringing those cooldowns down and you can really see where in some way like the Hydra, you might be able to get those damage numbers out more consistently over the course of a battle, which is really cool. But the true value is once you bring in that synergy with the Narcissus, because when he's on the same team and has any active skills on cooldown, he will decrease those cooldowns of one of their skills by two turns. So let's say you go through with that A2 or that A3 and it's now on cooldown and you're reducing those. You're just going to keep proccing this and proccing this as long as you keep utilizing this A1 skill, which is very powerful. But then if White King Narciss is on the team and has no active skills, it will decrease the random ally skill instead by two turns. And um, also heals the ally by 10% of this champion's max HP. So really bringing up a HP to get a value of that heal can actually be very strong here. So leading into the A2 with the Shield of Ameria, she actually removes all debuffs from all allies, which is great, it's the reason why we love champions such as Pythion universally, but she will also place a shield buff equal to 25% of this champion's max HP for 2 turns, so you really want to be ramping it up to optimise the value of this. But once again, bringing in that combination, you're going to get a benefit of a 25% strengthen on all allies for 2 turns, which is huge, and then will fill the termites of all allies by 10%, so an overall great synergy here. And then we'll revive a dead ally with 50% HP and 75% turn meter. And then we'll reset the cooldown of that ally's skills completely. Which if you think about the Hydra boss, your damage dealer falls to the ground. You bring them straight back up and get another nuke out. And the same theme will carry into places like the classic arena, right? Could be very powerful. But then if you've got the combination, we'll revive them with 75% HP and 100% turn meter instead. Literally granting you an immediate turn. Which is huge. Like hopefully we can see that today. And then after the revival, we'll decrease the temmies of enemies by 10%, which actually does work without the pairing. I wish they would change the way that this skill is ordered. Maybe put this part here above it, so it's a little more clearer, right? And then if the combination is on the team, um, decrease the temmies as well by 20%, which cannot be resisted, which I love. And then leading into the passive, whenever an enemy tries to place a fear, true fear, freeze, provoke, sleep, stun, or petrification, basically all crowd control, um, debuff on the ally with the highest crit damage will transfer those debuffs onto this champion instead. So as we was trying to demonstrate throughout the Doom Tower part, I was trying to like send those freezes to her instead to keep my Narciss in the mix. And then I actually tried it in Hydra as well to deter the true fears from the Head of Torment onto my target, and it was working, which we'll show later. And you can even think about like the provokes, right, from Head of Wrath can definitely be a strong Hydra combination here to keep your highest crit damage target in the race. 
Um, we'll then fill the turn meters of this champion by 50% if they miss their turn due to these debuffs. So if that 50% chance procs from a fear, you'll be able to boost your turn meter into your next turn, right? Then at the start of this champion's turn, we'll remove those debuffs. And if the um, Nasus is on the same team, we'll transfer them, right? Uh, or it just removes them. All right. And then if they're multiple champions, of course, only one will activate with a speed aura. So in terms of the ways that I built this champion today, I've actually gone with Righteous, which gives us speed and resistance, two things that I'm valuing very highly on Ankora. But of course, you could go ways of maybe Bolster slash Stone Skin or Full Stone Skin, for instance, to guarantee that you're going to get that cleanse out on your targets or even just the revival, right? If you get outsped and nuked to the ground. So, so many viable options. But what we've done is we've gone for... Pretty high HP at 70k, good defense, almost 300 speed and 600 resistance because I was trying to utilize those transfer effects to see if the resist will kind of cater for that. But outside of that, with the shield, she actually doesn't bring any heals to the mix. So if she starts getting debuffed and nuked, it kind of defeats the object of having a reviver in the team, right? So I just wanted to make sure she doesn't get mitigated so she stays alive um, to revive our allies if they die, right? Um, so yeah, that's basically it. And then in terms of masteries... Uh, we've gone down to the a timely intervention to boost their turn meter. It's something I traditionally like to do on my revivers. And um, we've also got the Law of Steel in there, Cycle of Magic to cycle those um, cleanse abilities. Um, we've also got Rapid Response to get some turn meter feels when those buffs wear off, like the shields. And then we've gone for the max HP for more sustain. And then we've just gone down the defensive tree, trying to proc some counterattacks to utilize that A1 to reduce those cooldowns, which is very beneficial. And the Cycle of Revenge as well for increasing that turn meter. So in terms of the White King Narcissus, he actually has a very similar A1 to Ankora, but it's kind of like the counterpart because he will increase the cooldown of a target's skills by two turns on a 50% chance, but becomes non-resistible if Ankora is on the same team. And you can imagine how annoying this could be over the course of a battle, right? But on the A2, the money scaling ability, he attacks all enemies, ignores 25% of the target's defense, but will place an extra hit on targets under shield or strength and buffs. Now, when we think about champions such as Marishka that bring in these conditions, being able to ignore that can be very strong in the arena. But of course, if you're not facing champions with these conditions, or just bolster sets, for instance, you know, you're only going to be getting that single um, hit ability out, which, you know, picking and choosing your fights will be beneficial. Um, damage inflicted by the skill cannot be decreased by enemy passive skills or masteries, such as um, Duchess, right? Straight out damage reduction or Pythion with those... For every buff that you have, you get like a damage reduction, right? You'll be able to go through those. And then damage inflicted by the skill cannot be increased by either this champion's masteries or passive skills, except when uh, attacking bosses here. Um, on the A3, attacks one enemy two times, increases the damage inflicted by this skill for 10% for each buff on the target. So if they are stacked up, you can get up to 50% there with an additional 10% for each buff on this champion, which will also stack up to 50%. You actually get a block revive for this if they've got three or more buffs. So you can imagine being able to go through and kill that Rotos or whoever that may be could be very strong. But also grant an extra turn if you've got the pairing on the same team. It's like, if you don't have the pairing, right? Both of them are good, but a lot of the value is coming out from that, right? A lot of it, especially with um, this champion in particular. And with the passive, this champion will receive 50% less damage when attacked by enemies, including bosses and their minions, outside of their active turn. So this will basically mean like, I'm trying to think of examples, um, ally attacks or counter attacks with those mastery procs or maybe even Cupidus when you're paired up with Venus, right? That's outside his active turn. Therefore, you won't be taking any damage from this. So, or 50% less damage. But once you've actually got the pairing, you take zero damage. It's bonkers, right? <laughs> it counters so many different pairings in the game. So I love this ability. And then this champion's skills will ignore shield and strengthen as well. Um, in terms of the artifacts on him, I've just gone with Savage and HP percent around the board. Going at 101,000 HP. Um, 209 speed, which is pretty good. 250% um, crit damage. And that's all we've been focusing on this, in this build. Uh, Masteries, we've of course gone down to the Helm Smasher. And then of course we went for Ruthless Ambush to get that extra damage boost. And then the cycle of violence trying to reset those cooldowns by taking them below 30% of their max HP, right? And then the defensive tree trying to use that A1 with retribution, counterattacking and reducing those cooldowns. So yeah, with that out of the way, I did kind of want to break them down quite a lot, I guess, because I never did a highlight video of all the new champions. But let's head into the arena and have some fun with them, right? Actually, before we do that, um, just for anyone that likes to skip through the video... Um, I just want to show you how that interacts with the Hydro Boss, right? Because I feel like that's a big part of her kit. 
So if we just go into Brutal, it doesn't really matter with a team like this. We're going to actually hit um, Head of Torment on purpose with our Rise of Arg with the highest crit damage. So there we go. Everyone's taking their fears as usual. But you'll see here, if we now attack with um, our highest crit damage target, the target has now changed into our lead position. So, you know, trying to keep them alive could actually be very powerful. And then when the provokes come through from Head of Wrath, you can see where that can really um, keep you going, right? So just thought I'd show you how that interacts. So I guess let's just start off with a team like this because I do want to show you the interaction with Cupidus um, when he's taking turns out of his active abilities. And also the damage numbers coming out from Narciss, of course. It really does create a bit of FOMO for me because it's like, when I was first reading this champion's kit, I was like, it's good, but I've got champions such as Pythian that do a very similar effect, right? But once you start bringing that synergy, and if I do happen to summon the Void, that's where it all comes to life. Um, let's just lock them out, doesn't really matter. Uh, we're going to get a bit of a shield on, you know, a bit of protection here. And I just want to see if we can attack him. Now, proc is passive. Zero damage with the mantle of undeath passive there. You see that, guys? Zero damage because we got the pairing. So the more that we can attack him again, right? But let's just go with a big nuke here. So AoE is the under shields. We should be seeing some big numbers. Boom. Boom. Take them down. Zero damage. <laughs> He's just like, you know what I mean? Look, ally attack. Zero damage. He just becomes like immune to all of this pain coming his way. He becomes immune to it. All right, let's speed this up. And now what we could do now is, let's just say we do an A1. Oh, he probably had his skills back, right? Zero damage. Increase those cooldowns. All right, so now we can bring her back. This is the thing, I really wish that she would have some form of healing in her abilities, right? With an A2, similar to like Wither the Crowns, bring through like a 30% a heal or something. That'd be huge for a reviver with all those um, conditions. Like Pythion brings in a bit of a heal as well, right? Um, so we now got three buffs on him. I don't think we can go through it, but we could try. Um, or do we just use the A1 again? Let's try it. Oh, there we go. Block Revive on the Cupidus because he had three or more buffs and there we go. And now we've granted that extra turn and we should be able to just nuke them to the ground. So you can really see how that synergy comes to life, right? We're going through those shields, getting those extra hits and um, manipulating their cooldowns, Block Revive abilities, and that all comes from the pairing synergy. Uh, let's try another team here. Um, any Taras Marishkas? or oh, MTG Jedi's got one. That could be a nasty combo. Uh, we might try that later. Let's go against um, Nub Braids. <laughs> He's got the combo as well. And do you know what? I feel like the problem at the moment is one, they brought in a Banner Lord's champion to make Taras and Marishka even stronger just as they're bringing in a duo that can somewhat counter them, right? It's like you're bringing this unity stuff with all of these extra conditions and it's just going to make them harder to kill. Like they should have just brought in a unity for another faction to kick off, right? So he's actually brought in no shields here. So we're not going to get those extra hits, unfortunately. But let's just go with the little shield, get some protection. Transfer those debuffs and there's the resisted. So it works, guys. It definitely works. Investing resistance into Ancora definitely is the play here. Because um, Sun Wukong tried to stun our champion. She then deterred it to herself and then she resisted that stun placement. So it definitely works. So I just had two phone calls back to back which completely distracted me. Um, let's go for a round two against Mr. Nubby. <laughs> we probably would have lost that one anyway, but I did want to complete the battle. I just lost track of what I was doing. Oh, but look at that. We've reset the cooldowns and then now she's re reset the cooldowns of the Narcissus as well, which could be nasty. <laughs> could be nasty. And there's the transfer effects. Once again, resisted them, right? Um, let's get a bit of a block debuffs up. That's going to be cool. And can we take him out? Can we take him out? Would be beneficial to do that. Let's try to do it. Oh, it's bloody UDK. This is the problem. It's not even the Narcissus. It's just... It's UDK. <laughs> It's UDK. Oh, there's the reset cooldowns again. And he's got a two-turn stone skin. Oh, we're going to be here for ages. There we go. All right. Let's just heal it up a little bit here. Oh, we've got one more turn on that stone skin. All right, let's go with the AoE now. Hopefully, we should kill him. There we go. That's perfect. Took them out the race. There we go. Reset his cooldowns again. We stayed alive. That's cool. We just need one more. One more hit. Let's um, get the revive on. Uh, we could go... Oh, this is another problem. 
Just UDK. <laughs> All right, we took him out again. Extra turn. There we go. Reset his cooldowns or something. We need to do something. I'll get a shield cleanse. Um, now we can get this on you. Woo! All right, now we can utilize the revive of him. 100% turn meter. Go for another nuke. Nice. There we go. Man, <laughs> no shields, UDK. That was a nasty combination. <laughs> Nubs was out to get us, guys. He was out to get us. Oh, no. No, no, no. Oh, the counter. Oh, I got complacent and I clicked auto. I can't believe it. <laughs> oh, no. But we could have maybe pulled that off. That was just, oh, man. <laughs> it is what it is. We're leaving that in. All right, um, let's go face another team now before we get... <laughs> Embarrassed once again from Mr. Nubby. Um, well, Taras and Marishka here. Oh, do you know what? I actually faced this team yesterday. I'll, I'll throw a screenshot up now. And this run went on for so long. And I was battling and battling and battling. And I was just like, I'm not going to give up. But stay tuned towards the end of the video. We're going for a round two against Mr. Scratch himself. I know he's got some super tanky um, Siffy here. And she was just impossible to kill. Impossible. Um, but yeah, we'll do that later. Um, who else can we face here? Um, another Encora team here. Everyone's putting them up in their defense. So let's just face them all, right? Let's just face them all. Oh. Ooh. Well, they have got shields on. They have got shields on. Let's bring her back. Um, we might get petrified, but it should deter it, right? Let's see how that works now. So boom, boom, transfers the... I was thinking I might transfer the petrification. Maybe I just didn't catch it. All right, let's speed us up. Um, get a bit of a cleanse, a bit of a shield, some protection here. Keep those shields up, Mifrada. That's exactly what we want to see. That's exactly what we want to see. All right, reduce your turn meter. And it should be nullifying the effects of Duchess, right? It should be. Let's see if the passive procs. Yeah, I didn't see any passive proc there from the damage reduction from AOE abilities, so maybe it did. All right, let's reset the cooldowns again. You can see where this combo is just crazy. Reset again, go for another nuke. It's just bonkers. All right, um, let's get a little bit of this on you. Okay. Um, we can bring her back, reset those cooldowns, right? Boom. Another cleanse. Send those poisons back to him. Go for another AoE. And can that be it? There we go. Perfecto. Nice. All right. One more hit. It's so fun. It's like when you try the, the champion by yourself, right? It's like, okay, you got a bit of a revival. But once you start bringing that synergy together, it's just crazy. Absolutely crazy. So next up, let's just go up against a team like this with a more traditional style with only using Ancora um, in the team. And we've kind of taken out the partner ability. Just going to see how she is by herself here. So what she's going to bring in is a nice shield. If somebody does die, I kind of want my um, Sun Wukong to die. Maybe. So we can utilize it. But let's just take these buffs off. Boom. With the block debuffs. There we go. Debuff block. That's cool. And that's actually kind of deterring the, um, the provokes, right? Taking the provokes from the, the Crisk onto her, and then she's resisting it because of the block debuffs. But I'm pretty sure that would work with the high resistance as well, like we showed earlier. With a nuke. It's really hard because we actually need someone to die to see the full value of it. But outside of that, it's just going to be A1s, resetting cooldowns. A1s, resetting cooldowns. And that's how it's going to carry for the entirety of the run. Let's see if we can get one more proc on that. A1. Oh, we didn't see it back to back there. But yeah, over the battle, it'd be like a 50% chance, right, to reset those cooldowns of someone like Sun Wukong, like a Kanjafon, just allowing them to get those nukes out more consistently without relying on someone like a Yumiko or a Kaimo to reset those cooldowns for you. So this is like an alternative for it, right, by using that A1, but it's just a 50% chance. Um, okay, um, next up, what else can we go up against here? Ooh, another ultimate death knight. Let's go up against this one, bring back that same squad that we had. We was having fun with that, right? It is um, a couple's video, I guess, overall. Um, it's got recently used. Um, we'll bring in... Yeah, we're bringing the same kind of squad. We could lock them out again. Let's take out the second Reviver, though. Let's take out the second Reviver. We're going to bring in Firo. Hey! 
<laughs> but actually, been working on a video for him. It should be out very soon, I guess. Locked him out. Get a shield on. Um, can we get a block buffs? We could go decrease accuracy as well. We could go decrease accuracy with a perfect veil, providing an extra form of damage reduction. Let's uh, do that. Let's go. And now we're going to go with a nuke, of course, because they got double hits. And boom, sit down. Sit down. We've just got UDK left. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that is what I'm talking about. So it's like once you see that shield, usually you're like, oh, damn, I don't want to be facing this shield. But the second that you bring um, this new champion in, it's like, <laughs> bring me the shields. If you don't have them, we don't want it because then we don't get those double nukes, right? So now we just got to sit and wait for UDK. Nice. Some decent damage coming out from that um, A3 there. It's not crazy from what I've been seeing. I think the full value is coming out from the A2, right? Boom, boom, shake the room. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, Fearow didn't really do anything there. It was just fun to see. Um, we've got another team here. Let's try this one. Did we try this one already? Not too sure. But we're keeping Fearow in the mix here, spicing it up. Not double revivers. Okay, let's get a bit of a shield on. Boom. Um, should we just do it again? We could go for the block buffs, but then we're going to get the cleanse, but we have locked them out. So our block buffs could be cool. That's right. There we go. Resisted on that one. And then we can go with a... Oh, no shields on this one. Interesting. So let's see how much it does without it. See, without the shields there, that would have been a nuke, but because we didn't have it, it's now not going to be a nuke, right? Oh, reduce the cooldowns of him. Let's bring back the cooldowns of him. Well, we just use that ability. Surely it should have reset, right? Oh, well. He hasn't got any buffs, so we're not going to be able to block revive. But we could maybe get an extra turn. Let's try it. So extra turn. We kill her as well. Oh, so close. Soul Reap. Oh, Soul Reap for the win. I actually just seen that blessing pop up last minute. Okay. Let's get a perfect veil on. Get some forms of protection. Oh, they're back again. They are back. Reset the cooldowns. There we go. Come from another nuke. Boom. Oh, wait, they're under strength no, because when Pytheon came back, it's kind of like a counter to Pytheon's passive there, because when he revives, he places a strengthened and it shields all strengthens. So that's putting us in a good place. That is putting us in a good place there. It seems like he's locked off the metamorph there. There we go, block revives, she had multiple buffs on. Very cool synergy against Pythion, actually. Something I didn't think of when he revives, so pretty cool. Um, any else other teams here that was thinking of facing? I'm just trying to keep it um, themed with Ancoras <laughs> versus the Ancoras. Um, Tyraku absolutely annihilated me with this ray yesterday. Do you know what? I'm going to show you it, right? It was bonkers. I don't know what he's built in that. Plus four, plus three ascension, but it absolutely blew me away. It blew me away. Can't lie. Um, let's go for it. Let's go for it. We'll go for a round two. I'm scared of this one. And then we're going to go and face Scratch uh, to wrap up the video, guys. Look at this. Look, she took no damage, though, because it's outside the active turn. Interesting. <sighs> Ooh. <laughs> Just like, what's, what's the point? It's like, what's the point? Can he do it by himself? Nah, because of UDK. We did get a reducing of cooldowns. UDK is just a nuisance. A1, can we get a turn? Okay, here we go. Boom, boom. Ooh, can we do the solo? He's got three buffs. Can we kill him? Come on. Oh, so close. Provoke. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, we lost to a UDK, the bane of my existence. We actually got pretty close there. <laughs> he almost soloed the entirety of that run. All right, let's go find Scratch. Where is he? Where is he? We're searching for him. I know he's got a different name on here. There he is. All right, guys, here comes the bane of existence. The Taras Marishka and the crazy Siffy. Uh, okay, who should we bring in here to really try and ramp this up? Last time I did use um, Revivals. It was effective with the Pythion. Uh, I'm just not sure if I needed the reset of cooldowns. That was the only thing. But the reset of the cooldowns of Taras was actually very clutch at the very start. Might just have to keep that in the mix, but we need to bring that Pythion back in. Let's try it. <laughs> We're just going for a round two, man. 
<laughs> Shout out to Scratch. Make sure you guys go drop a cheeky sub to him. One of my favorite creators in the scene. Let's go. All right, let's reset him. It's just UDK. That's basically the reason why I, I feel like I lose this one. So there we go. We're taking some damage there. Resisted some effects. Block debuffs. Okay, they have got shields. They do have uh, available. Can we nuke them? Boom, boom. Some decent damage. I believe I've seen some reaction procs there. Okay, um, let's go. Let's try and reset the cooldowns again. A one, get a bit of a heal on Yumiko. Okay, they still got shield, so let's go boom, boom, shake the room. He's going to revive the Taras now. And she's going to revive again as well. But we just need to just keep her turning it down, maybe. Could be the play here. Bit of a shield. So it's looking like, oh, we might be able to do this, but the amount of heals out of this champion is crazy. And what's really cool is because he's ignoring those shields, he's actually keeping the shields active. He's not cracking the shield. Therefore, you can constantly cycle that A2, granted they have it active, right? So uh, let's just keep this on here. Oh, who, what do we even do here, man? Can we get Block Reviver? Oh, can you imagine? Well, she's only got two buffs, not three, so. There's the Strengthen again. We're going to go at this for maybe three minutes. Um, yesterday was way too long, man. Can't be doing that again. All right, reset the cooldowns. Okay. Take it off again. Let's, the UDK has got no stone skin now. Bit of a shield, some protection. Go through with the nuke. Come on. Boom, boom. That's perfect. Don't kill her. No, don't kill her. Don't kill her. <laughs> For God's sake. I was going to cycle around and use the block revive on the Marishka. Ah. Uh, the bane of my existence, these champions, I tell you. Reset the cooldowns. See, sometimes it's not working. Surely it just be, it should be a flat chance, right? Surely it should just be a flat chance. Get Hex on you. Resist it, of course. There's three buffs here. Bump. Boom. Just not enough damage in my, in my build here. Just not enough damage. Keep the termiters down of you. Let's try to go for another nuke here. Oh, damn, we don't have it ready. Increase the cooldown there. That's pretty cool. The non-resistible placement. Reset. There we go. There's like every other turn it seems to be working, right? It's a bit weird. Uh, okay, let's keep you down. We need to keep you down. Block debuffs. There's the revival. Okay, let's go with the nuke. Boom, boom. Take him out. We might be... Wait, let's reset now. Perfect. We might be able to kill the Marishka here. If we get lucky. If we do, that is the power play. X, can we get it on? Nope. Ah, oh, the three boss wore off. For God's sake. For God's sake. <laughs> no. No, it's going to be it's gonna be the death of me, man. This is what happened. And I was like, oh, I might be able to beat this. And I was just so into it. And I just couldn't get it done. Just couldn't get it done. All right, here's the last nuke. We're out of here. You win again, Scratch. You win again. So, there we go. But obviously, this is like a top tier arena player, right? You're not going to be facing this every other day with six star blessings everywhere. And, you know, four stars on the Siffy. So in an average team, would we be able to win? I strongly believe so, but just to see 1.5 million damage is pretty fun to see, right? Alright, so while I was actually editing up my video, I noticed that throughout some of the runs, um, Ancora wasn't providing the cooldown reduction for White King Narciss with his A1 ability. And what it was coming down to was the weak hit placements against targets such as Ultimate Death Knight. So when you're actually using this skill, try and prioritize champions that's not forced so you don't grunt those weak hits because that can definitely be the reasoning behind you're not getting those cooldown reductions on your champions. So just something to pay note of. But yeah, on that note, guys, that is going to be all for today's video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to hit that like, subscribe button. Have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you all in a video soon. Peace.